Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, as you can see, I'm in the Halloween spirit, so happy Halloween to those of you who do celebrate. Um, I may get in a little bit of hot water for wearing this onesie on camera. Uh, my girlfriend has been a little bit insecure about how sexy I look in it. She keeps getting uh, scared that everyone's obviously gonna be all over me in, uh, in this koala onesie, so, uh, you know, I guess we're just gonna have to take that risk and uh, we'll see where it gets us. Um, nonetheless, uh, this week we worked on some Apache Hoodie Trino integration stuff. I've kind of been going back and forth with some absolute Japanese Giga Chad uh, as he shits on my code, which has actually been pretty good because um, it's helping me learn a little bit more about Trino, but I'll go over all that in a little bit and uh, kind of document what's been going on there. And uh, yeah, you know, it's coming along kind of slowly, but it's been a good learning experience. So let's go ahead and talk about what I've been up to. Okay, so let's go ahead and cover a little bit of the work that I've done over the past week. So long story short, when I was kind of looking into this idea of building data harness in general, kind of one of the things that I care about the most is that I can allow people to port in their existing tables or their existing systems without having them to, you know, adapt yet another table format or something. I don't want to be opinionated at least not yet, about which table format people can actually use. I want them to be able to say, oh, I have an iceberg table, let me bring that into this, or I have a hoodie table, or I have a delta lake table. And kind of the centralized idea of this whole data harness is that I am able to just kind of build snapshot reads from a variety of different query engines that integrate with the data harness to work. So for that to happen, it basically means that these query engines uh, that you know, know how to read from all these data sources have to do uh, snapshot reads in the first place. So when I was originally looking into what supported snapshot reads in Trino and what doesn't, the reason I'm using Trino is I feel like, you know, kind of just going off vibes, it's the most popular open source distributed query engine. Maybe Spark is actually going to be the better one. I think probably after I do all this Trino stuff, I'll, I'll move on to try and do something with Spark as well. But, you know, starting with Trino, we determined last episode that, you know, in Kafka, it's really important to be able to isolate reading a certain range of offsets within a given topic partition. And, uh, you know, eventually, probably next week, I'm going to try and do this for JDBC databases, at least those that support it, like Spanner or CockroachDB or YugabyteDB. Um, but the other one that we care about is Hoodie, Iceberg, and Delta Lake. So I can tell for certain that Delta Lake and Iceberg and Trino can perform these time travel queries. So a time travel query really just means, like, show me the state of the table as of a certain commit timestamp or a certain timestamp. So if I go to the Delta Lake um, connector documentation, and here I am, you can basically see that what they say is, you know, query historical data and you're seeing a previous snapshot of the table state. So in Hoodie, what this looks like, or sorry, in Trino, what this looks like is you do a select star from the table or a select whatever from the table and you use this syntax for version as of something, or you can use this syntax for timestamp as of something. So I've actually now looked at those connectors and we'll kind of explain how we got there. But the idea is, you know, Delta Lake can do this, but when I go to the hoodie documentation, you can see the hoodie documentation is actually pretty slim comparatively compared to Delta Lake or compared to Iceberg. And uh, it doesn't look like it exposes any time travel queries. You can see the timeline table, where the timeline table is going to indicate, you know, all the different commits that are in your table, but it doesn't give you the ability to see the previous state of our table. So long story short, uh, you know, that's kind of where this all starts out. And, you know, when I say I want to go ahead and build uh, or, you know, increment on the hoodie connector in Trino, the first thing that I have to do is just get a locally running hoodie table. So, you know, what they say in this connector spec is basically that you're using hoodie version 0.12.3. Uh, you need access to a Hive Metastore. So a Hive Metastore is kind of like your catalog for hoodie tables. It's almost like a database that has a pointer to uh, where your hoodie metadata lives on the Hadoop file system or S3 file system or something like that. Um, and then, you know, you want your data files as well, uh, supported in Parquet. So long story short, uh, what I did to go ahead and get this started was I went to uh, the Hive Quick Start Guide. So I don't need, uh, they basically give you a Docker image here that you can run. So it's super, super easy to run. You basically just pull the image with a few commands and then you start it up and run it on a particular port. Now they have a couple of options. One is to launch a Hive Server 2 with an embedded Metastore and the other is to launch only a standalone Metastore. I don't need a Hive Server 2 because I think that would be if I were like querying the table using you know a Hive query engine. And I'm not, I'm gonna be using Spark and I just need the Hive Metastore. So, I went ahead and ran this guy, and when I eventually bring up IntelliJ in a couple of minutes here, you'll see that I have that guy running in Docker. Um, 
So I ran Hive. Uh, I also went to the Hootie Quick Guide and uh, followed this tutorial right here, which was just the Spark Quick Start. Um, I figured that using Spark SQL would make my life relatively easy. Uh, and then they also give you a link for where to install Spark. So I found out pretty quickly, which is kind of unfortunate, that despite saying in the connector that they support Hoodie version 0.12.3 or higher, uh, they actually only really support Hoodie versions that are prior to 1.0. So 0.15 works, 0.14 works, 0.13 works, uh, but clearly no one has worked on this connector in a hot second, which is kind of disappointing because it actually leaves out one of the biggest, most important features of using Hoodie in general, which is that they don't really have great support for merge on read tables in Hoodie. So they do these things which are called read optimized queries in Hoodie, which what that really means is like disregard the fact that I did a merge on read and just read the prior state of the table. So the truth is, even though I'm offering the ability to do time travel, it's really only going to practically work for copy and write hoodie tables, which is a little bit disappointing, but I think it's nice just to, to get some code in for now. So that's kind of me setting the scene for all of this. Again, I followed that um, hoodie Spark uh, quick start, and that allowed me to just go ahead and create a table in Spark SQL. So I downloaded Spark SQL. I configured it to um, basically use my catalog. Let's see. So I've got... Um, you know, you want to register Spark SQL to use the hoodie extension. Uh, you want to tell it to use the hoodie catalog. You have to point it to your locally running Hive Metastore right here. So I'm running that at, um, you know, on my local host, and I'm running it at port 9083, which is the default for the Hive Metastore. I'm running the Hive Metastore through Docker. So if you see my Docker PS, which shows me all the like Docker images that are currently running, I've got a port bound on my local 9083, and now I'm running that Metastore. So that allows me to basically create these tables. I'm going to try and see if I can see any like prior things that I've done just in this terminal session because I don't really feel like restarting it right now. That's a nice long error message. All right, screw me then. Well, long story short, the idea is I have created a table via Spark SQL, basically just following uh, the quick start docs. So I created a table using this syntax in Spark SQL. Um, I inserted a data a bunch of times and I inserted it in multiple commit batch, uh, batches so that I can kind of test out performing all of these snapshot reads. That's basically gonna allow me to ensure that you know when I do a snapshot read, it actually filters down some data. So initially, my first kind of instinct here as to making this change was to yet again using another session variable where like, you know, when you have a Trino client right here, uh, you know, you would set a particular session variable and then you would make your query and that would know what timestamp to use. So let me just look in my actual commit right here. I tracked through the code a little bit, and basically everything kind of comes down to this one method right here called list status. So all list status is doing is, oh, God damn it, my uh, IntelliJ is formatting shit weirdly again. All list status is doing is basically um, for given partition info, it's finding all of the Hootie file groups that are a part of it. And so previously, as you can see, which is on the left, uh, we are calling this method right here, which is called get latest base files, which makes sense because that means you're performing an up-to-date read. And what we want to be doing instead from the hoodie API is calling a different method called get latest base files before or on. So that's also going to take in an optional, uh, you know, commit timestamp. And so that's what I'm basically wiring in right here is the read timestamp that a user is using. So let me just quickly show you in uh, my hoodie table down here. I've got a select star from hoodie default.old. So this is the data that's in my table. Let me go ahead and make that a little bit bigger. We've got you know, a bunch of commit timestamps. We've got some sequence numbers. We've got some record keys. So these are all kind of called hidden columns in Hoodie. And then the actual data itself is probably towards the right of the table. You know, you've got some UUIDs. You've got a rider name. You've got a driver name, some fare, some city. And you can see that the commit timestamps are a little bit different because I inserted data into multiple batches from Spark SQL. So, what I can do now is say, all right, well, I want to see one particular old state of the table. So rather than selecting star from hoodie.default.old, I want to do so, but only as of this particular commit timestamp that I'm popping in right here. When I do that, now all of a sudden I only have eight rows because that's how much data I originally inserted. So I'm actually seeing a former version of the table. 
this is all available and accessible because that old version of the table is you know still just files on my locally running Hadoop instance. So I'm you know I've just got files on my local system. I've got some old Parquet file that corresponds to this data right here, and then I've got some metadata that basically says this was the data at this particular commit time. So we can time travel back to just when only this Parquet file was a valid part of our table, and now we can only see those eight rows. So I think from there, the question is, you know, that was easy enough to put up. The reason ultimately that I did it is because I've got this absolute Chad right here, some Japanese guy who is uh, on a bunch of, you know, Apache projects and is a committer for many of them. Uh, he works on Trino, Starburst, etc. And this dude has been very, very fortunate, or, you know, very nice in terms of responding to stuff for me and has basically informed me, you know, like, hey, go ahead and use this versioning syntax instead of what you were doing beforehand because that's a lot more cleaner and it's you know actually what you want to be doing uh, in Trino in general. So very good advice out of him. Uh, also some nits, uh, you know, improving my testing. So for the tests that I'm writing, he seems particularly biased towards using more of like an integration test where you can see that I'm doing um, actual queries right here and kind of verifying that they print out the right error message rather than actually just you know. Uh, creating like a utility function or something that parses the version that I give in and checking that everything works okay there. So, you know, uh, I guess the kind of Trino repository in general is maybe a little bit more biased towards the integration tests rather than the unit tests, but you know, if, uh, if that's what committers have to tell me in order for me to get my code in, uh, then such is life. Um, I'm still trying to also get my um, CLA or like contributing license agreement in and no one wants to freaking review it, which sucks. So, um, yeah, that's why I went in the in the Trino Slack and tried to bother people, but no luck there so far. So we'll see. I think this change is now in a much better state than it originally was when I first published it, which is good because I think the code is actually looking decent. Uh, but hopefully, I can actually get it in. So you know, I've got my little uh, my thing right here. Uh, every test is passing, with the exception of me getting this agreement signed. So once that happens, hopefully, I can actually merge this one in. I think this one is probably a little bit better thought out than the Kafka one, which I now that you know I've actually had a legitimate reviewer come onto the hoodie change, I kind of realize that I'm probably going to have to expect to go back and forth a few times with my Kafka change. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, it's pretty cool. It's cool to interact with a guy on literally the entire opposite side of the globe who for some reason speaks English and uh, you know continues to shit on me. But uh, that's part of all this. He's got to get used to the code base. So I will continue to approach it with some amount of humility despite my Napoleon complex and uh, it's been a lot of fun. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. It was kind of cool for me to do like devlog styles of videos and I'm actually having a lot of fun just writing this code in general. Uh, it's actually pretty interesting. So uh, yeah, hopefully you guys find it interesting too. Um, but long story short, have a great weekend, enjoy your Halloween, and I will see you all in the next one.